There have been a lot of people popping up lately that seem to worship the Uberman schedule and only a few of them understand the hardships and impossibilities associated with it. In this video I will go over what needs to be considered before you choose to attempt this nigh impossible schedule and hopefully manage to make you reconsider your choice. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So Today the topic will not only be the Uberman schedule, but all nap-only schedules will be talked about in this umbrella term. If you need to refresh your memory on what these schedules are, we've made a video talking about them more in depth, which will be linked in the description. Uh, still, it's a pretty old video, so and my setup has improved a lot since then, so I won't fault you if you don't want to watch it. So I'll help you out. I'll summarize the schedules here. First we have Uberman, which consists of six naps that are 20 minutes long each, totaling two hours of sleep. Then we have Dimaction, which is four 30 minute naps, also totaling two hours. Um, then there's Tesla, which totals 1 hour and 20 minutes of sleep by having 4 equidistant 20 minute naps. And you could also count Spamile here uh, with a varying number of naps that usually totals around 3 hours of sleep each day. <laughs> Actually we haven't made a video dedicated uh, to this schedule yet. If you would be interested in getting notified when we release such a video, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss when we upload that video. Stay tuned. Anyways, back to the nap-only schedules. If you want to attempt a nap-only schedule, I want you to go through this list that I'm creating and make sure that you check all points before you attempt it, okay? This list will progress from physical limitations to mental ones. So in other words, let's get the vital stuff out of the way first. So point number one, your vital sleep need leads to total less than two hours. Let's dwell a bit further into this topic here. In order to sustainably adapt to Uberman, it's going to be necessary for you to have reduced sleep needs and reduced to the degree that all SWS and REM sleep that you get on mono are accounted for in the nap only schedule. Uh, this is easiest ensured with an EEG, but historically people uh, who need less than six hours of sleep on monophasic have been, a, have been shown to be able to adapt to the nap only schedules. Uh, most likely because of their reduced sleep needs. So either use an EEG to make sure that you have a decreased sleep needs or just go off of how long you sleep on mono while feeling good and not using any alarms. Unlike in the early 2000s, when Uber Sleep was written, the community has been able to show that in order to successfully adapt to a polyphasic schedule, uh, you need to get the same duration of REM sleep and slow wave sleep as when you are monophasic, which is enabled by the process of repartitioning. If you're interested in learning more about sleep needs, we've made a video on it that you can check out. It will be linked in the description. Uh, which leads me to point number two. Nap-only schedules are extremely hard to adapt to. Even if you have the genetic potential to adapt to it, it's going to require a shitload of willpower to push, push through the adaptation. Uh, like, <laughs> it's even hard to describe how strict you're going to need to be to get through the first one to two month long adaptation on this schedule. Um, your body is going to scream at you to let it sleep um, and it's going to make damn sure that you, you will fail in every possible way that it's thinkable. And I get some of you crazy bastards probably feel hyped about this situation like yeah I'm a manly man and I'm going to conquer my own body. Uh, your words only fuel my motivation. And to that I say <laughs> stop off. Are you 12 or something? If you, you, if you were given the choice to grab a cookie off the counter or to grab it from the middle of a burning fireplace, would you take it from the fire because you're a manly man? Well, if you answer yes to that question, continue to question three. 
So point three, are you willing to receive long-term issues to your physical health? See, the thing is that I've been able to observe from people uh, that attempt napped only schedules is that they developed insomnia, which took several months to simply treat uh, after just attempting a nap only schedule. This means waking up in the middle of the night several times and having a very hard time going to sleep while simultaneously feeling extremely tired. And I again, I again want to emphasize that these were only nap only attempts that didn't even last that long, around one to two weeks. It's definitely not a good situation to be in and I would personally not risk it altogether. But hey, you're a guy who enjoys doing things the hard way, so why not spice up with some s your sleep with some medical issues too? Point four, you need to have a human watch over you. Like it or not, pretty much no one has been able to adapt to Uberman without human assistance. Mechanical alarms will fail and you will just throw them across your room, shattering them in the process because you're so tired. So make sure that you have a human that makes sure that you wake up when you're expected to do so. And over to point five, you need to actually sleep or need to sleep in nap only pattern. The difference between two hours and four hours of sleep sounds like a percentually huge difference. I mean, four hours of sleep is 100% more than two hours of sleep. But in absolute values, you're comparing 20 hours of potential productive time to 22 hours of potential productive time. That's not a huge difference. If your productivity on Uberman is 50%, you'd achieve the same duration of pure productive time on, say, Everyman 3, with a productivity of only 55%. So make sure that you damn well need the extra two hours a day when you're attempting Uberman instead of attempting a schedule with four hours of total sleep. In other words, you need to be extremely busy and extremely required to utilize your game time perfectly. Okay, so let's repeat the points. You should have the genetics on your side and be a short sleeper. You should also have a super strong willpower to push through. You should be willing to accept long-term medical issues from the attempt and you should have a human supervisor uh, making sure that you get through your adaptation and you really need the time that you gain. And these are only the super essential points. There are of course a million smaller points that need to be checked for, uh, like having enough to do, making sure your alarm setup is optimal, checking your health and so on. But at this point I want to explain the reasoning why I am so against you trying nap only schedules and present an alternative to you. So the reason I'm against nap only schedules is that I want polyphasic sleeping to be the norm in the world and I want to help people achieve their goals. People who fail to adapt to a polyphasic schedule have a much higher chance to abandon it in the future. Uh, these people can be split into two categories. Uh, the people who just abandon polyphasic sleeping and stay quiet about it, and those who are extremely vocal about it and target the science as a whole. If you have someone who makes videos about their adaptation progress and then fail, uh, most often they will just stop making videos. This seems harmless, but some other curious fellow may find their lugs and be persuaded to try them themselves, thus fueling a cycle of unsuccessful attempts. And if someone belongs to the second category, they will lash out towards the community as a whole, discrediting the scientific endeavors that we are doing and just claim that the whole thing is baloney. This discourages people who may have wanted to try a more realistic schedule from actually attempting it, thus working against what I'm trying to get, which is more people to unlock, unlock the potential of their bodies. Okay, now you know about my personal beef with nap-only schedules, uh, namely that they cause people to fail and others to not even want to attempt the schedule. And I'll now present to you an alternative. A polyphasic schedule with a higher total sleep time. Okay, so I know that five hours of sleep doesn't sound as sexy as two hours, 
but believe me, the productivity and alertness boost that you get from schedules like Everyman 2 is crazy compared to monophasic sleep. And that's not all. You could even attempt to gradually reduce your total sleep time uh, to come closer to 2 hours a day with the gradual adaptation method. If you're interested in learning more about that, I've made a video on it in the past that you'll find in the description below. But okay, that was all for today. Hopefully you'll attempt an easier schedule than Uberman, but if you still want to do it, I hope that you don't abandon the practice as a whole if you fail your extreme schedule. Anyways, good luck and remember to have pleasant naps, people!